Hello, fellow time travelers. Welcome to California three to five million years ago. Not so much distant past, but long enough for the remnants of marine life to be fossilized. We will be taking a closer look at the deposits of Purissima Formation, exposed at the ocean beaches near San Francisco. The deposits consist of sandstone and mudstone. They were formed a few miles into the ocean at a depth of around 100 feet, give or take a few dozen feet. We found plenty of bone fragments. Needless to remind you that the right approach to vertebrae remains in California, fossilized or not, is catch and release, meaning no collecting. In some places, you can easily spot a dozen pieces of bone in one visit. Once you find one or two, you start recognizing more similar rocks and will be surprised by how many you can actually find. Most of the bones are from whale skeletons, but some could belong to other marine mammals like harbor seals. Who knows? The descendants of those creatures whose fossilized bones are scattered among the gravel could be watching you from nearby rocks and wondering what you are doing on the beach. The other typical group of fossils in gray rocks of the Purissima Formation is represented by bivalve shells. Clams are mostly bottom dwellers and filter feeders. It seems that the most common shells are Macoma and Lucinoma annulata at this particular location. Snails are also present, but they are mostly predatory and therefore less frequent. The shells of Macoma are those of typical bivalves, and Lucinoma shells are more rounded and may resemble brachiopods by the symmetry of the left and right sides of the same valve. But they are definitely bivalves because no pedicle opening can be found. This elongated fossil looks like it could be Panopea generosa. A common name is geoduck. These mollusks have very long siphons. The modern-day geoducks can live over a hundred years, have a siphon as long as three feet, and, unfortunately, have a chance to end up on a table at local restaurants along the northern part of the United States Pacific coast. Some bivalves have signs of predation, namely holes drilled by snails to reach the flesh of the poor bivalves. Snails, also known as gastropods, can be nasty neighbors. A moon snail, for example, after finding its prey, scrapes the shell with a tongue-like radula, covered with tiny teeth, making a perfectly round hole. The snail then injects enzymes and hydrochloric acid inside the bivalve for digestion and sucks the softened flesh, feeding on the poor bivalve over several days. The moon snails are known to migrate in summertime to shallow waters for mating and depositing eggs. However, not all gastropods are predatory. Snails from genus Nasarius are known to scientists as opportunistic eaters of dead organic material, or simply scavengers. Interestingly, the color of material inside the clams is yellowish, while the surrounding matrix is gray. It could indicate that the shells were redeposited, maybe even after fossilization. Note that we identified species to the best of our knowledge. Check the description of this video for additional resources that would help you to ID the fossils of the Purissima Formation. Consider our video as a push towards the right direction rather than a definitive guide. Here is the fossilized shell of a slipper snail. Slipper snails are still found all over the Pacific coast and are quite curious creatures. They change their gender during development from being male while small and turning into females after growing up. Scientists call such creatures sequential hermaphrodites, and it was determined that transformation depends on the environment and on social interactions. Finally, I want to mention ghost shrimp burrows, which are easy to observe on the surface of the coastal cliffs, for example, at San Gregorio State Beach. These structures are considered to be trace fossils. Ghost shrimps often use pellets made of mud as a building material. You can say that when you see a bumpy surface comprised of many rounded parts. It's amazing that these seemingly ephemeral structures would last for millions of years. Part of the reason could be that their creators lived at certain depths where turbulence is limited. 
Thanks for watching! I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, hit the like or subscribe button and see you next time in another period of Earth history. Bye bye for now!